Okay, welcome to ARC 436, Advanced Modeling. This is class one. First thing we're going to look at is how to set the units in Rhino. So if you type in units, enter at the command prompt, this will bring up the document properties dialog box. And by default, the model units are set to feet. That's fine, that means one unit equals one foot. If you move something 12, it'll move 12 feet. We are going to set up the distance display to feet and inches. And for now, the display precision could be the default. Click OK. Primarily, we're going to try to work in the 3D viewport, so in the perspective viewport. So if you double click on the word perspective, that will maximize that viewport. And to 3D orbit in the viewport, you hold down your right mouse button. And the wheel will zoom in and out. And if you hold the shift key and the right mouse button, it will pan. The next thing we're going to look at setting up is the grid, because we're going to use the grid in Rhino to set up a formal logic, something to snap to uh, with our geometry. So in the command line for Rhino, if you start to type in commands, for instance, I'm starting to type in document properties. Uh, it's like an autofill in Google. It'll show me my options. I can select document properties. And we're going to look at setting the grid. So from the li list on the left, we see grid. And first thing we're going to do is change the grid extents to 200 feet. We're going to show minor grid lines every 20 feet. And we'll show major lines every 10 minor grid lines. And we can always change that, of course. If we want to show minor grid lines every one foot, we could do that as well. And that would mean that major lines would be every 10 feet. So every time we see uh, a heavy outline of a square, that's 10 feet by 10 feet. And I like to turn on my show world axes so I can see my x, y, z axes. And then uh, and you see that showed up in the lower left hand corner here my positive x to the right y up and then the z axis being the vertical 3d space the snap spacing we can set to snap to every one foot for now so we're going to be doing a lot of conceptual advanced geometric modeling and we won't do a whole lot of modeling that's smaller than one foot increments so we'll have our snap spacing to one foot and we can click ok so now we have a grid set up, as I mentioned, uh, every 10 feet. And also a quick way to get the document properties, and I think this is standard in all Revit from the main toolbar, you have the options button. Okay. Now at the bottom of the screen, we have options for snap so with snap being on by default so snap is bold at the bottom of the screen this will snap to the grid so if I start to draw if I type in for instance polyline that is going to snap to the grid lines okay O snap, if I click on O snap, that means object snap. So if I turn on object snap or click on it, I get my object snap toolbar at the bottom, and now I can set my settings to snap to objects, not the grid. So now if I drew another polyline, it would snap to my objects. Okay, so Rhino uses NURBS modeling. So 
Let's break down geometry type, geometry types for nerves. So we're going to start uh, by looking at the four geometry types, and those four types are points, and then curves, and this is all nerves based. So we have points, and then we have nerves, curves, and then our nerves, curves will generate nerves, surfaces. And then for our exporting to, let's say, the 3D printer or to other software, we can convert this nerves geometry to polygonal meshes. So we're going to look at these four geometry types um, now. And if I just select what I've drawn here and hit the delete key, I can erase that. So I want to organize my types of geometry on layers. So if I type layer enter, that brings up my layers dialog box. And in Rhino, by default, you have a default layer and then you have five additional layers. So typically I will keep my default layer and I'll start to rename these other layers. So if I double click on the text for layer one, I can rename that and I'm going to call it points. And layer two, I'm going to call curves. So the thing to remember is everything is a curve in Rhino. Rhino uses nerves algorithms. And what that means is when you draw a circle, <clears throat> it's a mathematical representation of a circle. Or if you draw a line, it's a mathematical representation of a line. So Rhino views everything as a curve. You can turn a straight line segment by adding more control points into uh, a curve visually. And we'll talk more about that. So we have the layer curves. We're going to make another layer called surfaces. One more, uh, this is not really, uh, it is a geometry type and we'll talk more about that. We're going to make a layer for our solids. And then for our export, we're going to make a layer called meshes. Okay, we'll start by making, just by double clicking here, I can make my points layer current. So from the main toolbar, we have our point button. And in Rhino, many of these buttons have a left click option, which in this case would be one point and a right-click option, which would be multiple points. So I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to create um, a series of points. So these are my points. Again, we're breaking down uh, nerves geometry. So I can start with points, and I can now use those points to create a nerves curve. So I'm going to make my curves layer current. I'm going to type the command curve and I'm going to use curve through point or points and it says select points to build curve through. Now it will draw the curve in the order that I select the point so I'm going to kind of use a different logic for selecting the, these so you can see that it will draw the curve in the order that I select the points. Okay, so here is our curve. Now, we can take this nerves curve and turn it into a nerves surface. So I'm going to make my surface layer current. I'm going to type in extrude, and I'm going to choose extrude curve. Select the curve that I want to extrude, enter, and then select its height or choose its height. And to see this in a shaded viewport, which is helpful, we have the three spheres from the main toolbar. And if you click on the second sphere with the grid behind it, you will get a shaded viewport. Okay, so now we have a nerves surface.